Welcome back everybody and Shavua Tov. Today uh, let's, we're continuing the uh, series, uh, the lessons of Rav Victor Miller, that's how. Uh, the, the, we're up to uh, part 5. This is Yusuf Nalo. And uh, today uh, it's uh, the first thing I'm going to uh, talk about is the Torah of Victor, uh, in the Parashat Devarim edition. Uh, Parashat Ki Sitze, in his image. This was first published uh, year 3, uh, issue 45. The part, part 1, the greatness of inhumanity. Hanging the wicked. And if a man should make him a sin whose judgment is death, he should be put to death. And afterward you should hang him on a post. Ki Sitze 21-22. The Torah tells us that certain criminals are punished uh, by a form of death penalty called skila, stoning, and it says Sanhedrin 45b and Kohanish Kalin Nitlin, all who, those who get skila must be hanged. There is no such thing as death by hanging according to the Torah, but those who are put to death by stoning uh, are, are subsequently hung up. On a post. That's because unlike the demoralized society of today, where misplaced compassion rules the street, and therefore criminals rule the street, Hashem's Torah raises on high the principle of punishing criminals, and therefore we raise aloft the ideal of retribution by hanging the body of the condemned man on a post for everyone to see. And all of Israel should hear, and they should be afraid, Ibid, the sinner, even in death, is publicly scorned in order to demonstrate the judgment uh, taken against anyone who might brazenly act against the will of Hashem. The sudden U-turn. And yet, in the seven years of Pesuk, we find something very different. Do not leave his body hanging there overnight. Ebed, uh, I-B-I-D, uh, that is. A person hanging in public? Oh no, don't leave him hanging for too long, says the Pesuk. And because of that result, the halakha is that we fulfill our mitzvah and you should hang him on a piece of wood and the matarin or somiyad, we take him down right away to fulfill the words, do not leave him hanging. Sanhedrin 46b. Now such a turnabout, such a sudden change in direction has to be understood. And so the pasuk gives us the reason. It's a, it's a disgrace for el when a man remains hanging. To leave a man hanging from a tree is a disgrace for Hashem. Now we're talking about talking here about a man who deserves the death sentence. If a Jewish person sentenced someone to death, it means that it's it was beyond any shadow of doubt that he was guilty. He certainly deserved it, and therefore, why don't we leave him hanging there? That's the purpose of the mitzvah at all. After all, we want everyone to see the results of rebelling against the Torah. Isn't it true that hanging a sinner for everyone to see reinforces the moral fiber of society? Don't make light of it. Yes, of course it does. Absolutely. And yet, al Baruch Hu says, take him down anyhow. Take him down right away because it's disgracing me when a man uh, remains hanging. It's a kalat uh, ilkim. It makes light of Hashem. Kala means to make light of. Like the word cow, it means that Akash Baruch himself is dishonored when the man is disgraced. Why is this so? Now, uh, how is the man, hanging man, a disgrace for Hashem? Because he is uh, made uh, in the image of Hashem, as it says Bereshit 9 6, in the image of God he made man. Rashi Kisitse Ibn, when a dead man is hanging, is hanging, there on the Hagalos, it's the image of Hashem that is uh, hanging. The black sheep in the family. A sage of Sanhedrin 46b is like what once happened that two men brothers, identical twins, lived in the same city many years past, and one of them eventually became king. He was a wise person, well liked, and he, was, and he made way, way up among the aristocracy of the kingdom, the city, when, until they appointed him king. Until he was an appointed king. If, meanwhile, his twin brother wasn't as successful. He chose a different profession. He became a Ganav, a bandit who bombish travels on the back roads outside the city. Of the city. Uh, finally, the bandit was caught and condemned to death. It's, that's how it was among the Gentiles in the good old days. A, a highway bandit was executed. 
if the more liberal people were in charge, he would get away with his hand being uh, cut off. Otherwise, he was crucified. That's the way the Romans liked to do it in the ancient days. And they would leave him hanging there as a warning of others. No ban is allowed here. And it worked. Uh, it would be gone off, taught once and twice and three times before choosing such a profession. So this bandit, the king's identical brother twin, is hanging on the gallows in the city square, and now uh, there's murmuring around the city residents, and raises to a crescendo. What's going on here? They ha the king is hanging! Our king is hanging from the gallows! So to Ziva HaMelech Vihoridohu, the king gives an order, take him down immediately, it's a bizarre for the king, because they have the same face. The king says take him down because when a person looks at it, they'll say the king is hanging and that's a disgrace for me. Making war on mankind. I jumped uh, ahead uh, to EP each uh, page then. And because the principle is important, because it's the foundation of a Torah, that's why there has been, uh, been raised against it a tremendous opposition in the last hundred years that a position has become later than ever before. That's the theory of evolution. Evolution is an open attack on the principle of Godless Ha'adam. It's an open war against the star principle of Zalem el Kaim. The government is giving billions of dollars uh, to help the evolutions fight their war. Billions of dollars. And NASA is going to, trying to fly uh, ships to all the planets in order to discover some other creatures who develop by accident in other ways. All over the world, it's evolution. Shemolution. Shmevolution. Wherever you turn, if you would consider how much literature is devoted to the subject of billionaire man, if you would see the libraries and institutions, the funding of our government, how many different branches of research have been established in the subject, you'll see that there is nothing in the world today that is getting us as much attention as in the attack on the greatness of mankind. But they are in a Zalem of Akim. A, a God is not a Shagat. Not only is a great the greatness of mankind disregarded, on the contrary, it's disparaged and played down. The Gentile world doesn't want to hear what the Torah says. They're busy wanting to believe that you're just a highly developed amoeba, fish who came out of water. And grow legs. I may uh, believe you now, but Adam, who was created with Zalem, uh, I may surprise you now, but Adam, who was created with Zalem Elikim, doesn't mean only Jews. Adam means all of mankind. In Sabbatica, they never said on a guy the word Shegetz. Shegetz comes from the words Shekets, uh, abomination. They never said uh, Shegetz on a guy. Never, never. Six years I was there. I listened not once. How can you say Shagas on a human face? How can you say Shagas on a Zalem al -Kim? And yet the world will won't accept their own greatness. Man is considered just an animal, a creature of base traits and desires. All of the animalistic desires are glorified in the newspapers, and the TV, movies, and books are filled with late Zanos. They are busy ridiculing human traits making fun of human weaknesses, weaknesses, and that, that means they're busy ignoring the glory that resides in mankind. They're doing everything they possibly can to take the portrait of Akash Barko and, and reduce themselves to animals. It's pity that the world has taken the image of a game, the gift of greatness, and dipped it that face in mud. They took a beautiful image and smeared it with, with dirt. The real criteria, the entire world today thinks like children who have no training, no ability to see beyond superficialities, and therefore they are focused on the animal uh, functions of man. A colored boy is sitting on a milk crate on uh, a street corner, and he's thinking whether his teacher in school is a good teacher or not. So he, he says, uh, when the teacher leans over to me and shows me the place he had the bad ref, that's the measure of a fellow Human being. Suppose this colored boy would be transported to an era of 200 years ago, before people used soap. So there was a human weakness that people didn't always smell good. You can't just help it without salt. 
Uh, so uh, people don't have baths in their homes. They didn't have a hot bath. Bathing was a difficult thing to achieve. A hot bath? Even Queen Elizabeth took only one hot bath a year. It was a big event. And so if you would be transported back 200 years and you never uh, learned about Zalim the King, you would disdain all the great people who lived there. Great heroes, great geniuses and scientists would be nothing because... Uh, because just like a dog, and you would take one sniff and reject them. Those are the standards of the dog. Uh, the next one is also a Tars Vigdor, the ne very next issue. Year 3, issue 46. Kar uh, Parashat Kitavo, a stubborn nation. Who else made them? In this week's Parasha, uh, this week's Sidra, some uh, of the most glorious words ever said about Am Yisrael, they're claimed by Akash Baruch himself. Hashem is love you today. To be his treasured nation, above whom you are, we are we raised up high, above everyone, to make you an uppermost, above all the nations that he made. Now we should pay attention at the end of that episode. Hashem makes you uppermost above all the nations that he made. The last few words seem like uh, to be unnecessary. It could have just as well said he made the uppermost. Uh, Made you uppermost above all the nations. Why did the Torah add that he made? Certainly, uh, Hashem made the nations. Who else uh, made them? And the answer is like this that he made in the Tanakh uh, means that he made for a purpose. The nations were created, created for, with a certain function of providing the Amisar with the opportunity to excel in virtue. Hashem is not merely relating here the praises of the chosen people is telling us how we remain the chosen people how to achieve being the uppermost of all the nations of the world and the secret to the greatness is the nations that he made for the for that purpose now jump to his page six the gullible catholics don't we know even today that there's a certain place in france called lourdes L O U R D E S, where pilgrims once came back and they give testimonials. Of course, you don't hear about it much anymore because today there is already a lot of competition. The atheists don't have uh, such emuna, and here, and there are the Protestants too. We don't believe in it, but if you would read Catholic periodicals, you would see that there are testimonials of our end. Here's a man whose doctors had given up in in his case. His feet are were infected. And they had to be amputated. It was hopeless. He came to Lourdes, unconscious. Soon, as, but as soon as he came there and bowed down to the Lord of Good Hope or some other name there, immediately he threw away his crutches and he walked out without even a single a slight limp. There's another man who says he had multiple sclerosis and he was sentenced by the doctor that he's going to die in a few year, years. So he went to a certain prelate. A priest in the Philadelphia who gave him a blessing, and sure enough, in a short time, he forgot that he, he was ever sick. There are stories like that without numbers, and they are written there without the name and address of the man who testifies. All over the world, our Lord Shaka and Neighbor claim that our Zara helped them become healthy. That's how it is when the religion, in, the religion is dominant. All kinds of stories of success come in, and it's very hard to resist. This propaganda, the last nation laughs, the little nation laughs. I mean, and that was and that was the the world in which the uh, Am Yisrael lived, a world where everybody believed it, Im implicitly in Avodazara. When a lie is adopted by many people, it becomes extremely difficult, almost impossible to withstand it. It wasn't even a suffix. Only a lunatic would ignore the truth of how the world well worked. And along came uh, this little nation, the Mi'at Mikko Hamim, and they were expected to ignore it all. Not only uh, ignore it, uh, but to laugh at the whole world. And uh, what we're uh, learning now is what uh, was planned that way from the beginning. Our daughter was put into this world for no other purpose than we should gain reward by means of resisting it. Sanhedrin 964a. That, that's what the sages of the Anshik and the Law said. We have to study those words. It's a significant statement made by the group of the wisest man. 
the Lord with the old tree was given to the world by Hashem as an opportunity for the Amis are to gain reward. The ability to combat the uh, opinions of the world is done one of the great strengths of our people. If you, if you didn't uh, have any difficulty in being a Jew, you wouldn't get much credit to Prince Abba. The more difficult it is, the more reward you get. Uh, let's see what's next. The resistance. Now it's important to understand that the test of our deliverer is only the beginning of our responsibility to resist against the world. We call the door of our door in every generation. Amdim Aleinu, they write it's against us to fill our mind through foolishness. Our job is to turn our backs on them and then to regal all the Yishaka of the outside world. No matter what, how many people are telling us we're wrong, we won't budge. All the false religions, all the idol worshippers, all the false ideas, the false f philosophies, humanism, socialism, all the isms, all the false sciences, and the toy vase, and materialism, it's all a test of the multitudes trying to overpower us. The mi'at mikol ha'amim. Now you, you know why there is idolatry in the world, why there are other religions in the world, why there is evolution in the world. Why there is so much foolishness and wickedness that spreads in the world. It's intended only that as an opportunity as for reward, for greatness. We gain a reward by resisting them. And when a Jew is able to turn his back on all the false ideals, when he is able to say that the idea, idols are nothing, Al means nothing, uh, they're all nothing, uh, gods, if sports is nothing, the universities are nothing, entertainment is not nothing, the newspapers are nothing, socialism is nothing. By standing in opposition to the great, uh, tour, uh, empire, uh, great empires that surround us on all sides, the finest ideals and culture that try to uh, tempt you, and despite everything, you stand up and say, I'm not interested. No matter what the world says, or claiming that a Hashem, that Hashem had, that's the greatest greatness of the Am Yisrael. Skipping on page to page nine, resisting the jihad, and the same with Islam. The Jews in the Islamic countries also face multitudes of naysayers. I mean, the Jews in the Islamic countries also face multitudes of naysayers. When Muhammad, the Mishugas, that's what the Rambam call him. <laughs> How funny is that? They admire the Rambam so much, but uh, but he called them called the uh, Navi in quotation a uh, Mishugas. <laughs> a Mishuga who came out of the desert when he appeared on the scene of history. He was so crazy that he couldn't even imagine anyone to scream over him. He waved. The sword and said, if you are wicked enough to disagree with me, then you must be destroyed. And uh, he went about uh, doing it himself. He, did do, he didn't wait around but for Hashem to do it. He promised that they would be destroyed by fire and by sword, and he provided both. And as silly as he was, the Kaddish Baha gave him very great success. He had phenomenal success. All of a sudden, there was an Islam, millions and millions of people who were telling you that the truth was with them and spread like wildfire. In a very short uh, time, the Skriya had conquered all of northern a uh, Africa. The Mohammedans took over Spain and conquered the Byzantine Empire. They swarmed over Turkey and the whole Middle East. Important parts of Europe also became Islamic. They conquered Greece and even parts of what is now Hungary uh, belonged to the Turks. There are still mosques in Bulgaria and Sofia, and then they spread to the Far East too. The Pakistanis are followed the rise of Muhammad and many other places too. Now, you can, how can it be that one man, one lunatic, should be accomplished so much? How much? How can a shaker of two false religions spread across the world in such a way? The answer is, uh, it was done for us. Asher Asa means that Hashem made that all for us. HaKadosh Baruch Hu was sending, sending them to test us because 
because uh, when when uh, people have uh, power and uh, numbers uh, that impresses the minority you might begin to think look if if Hashem is giving them a victory and uh, they're spreading maybe there is something there it was it, it was very difficult for a small minority to stand permanently in opposition to a tremendous majority, modern foes. And that's why today we face the same challenges, the same kinds of deceptions. It's different yet to ours, but the same challenge of great numbers. Today, all over the world, evolution, evolution, evolution. Wherever you turn, the fair truth is that evolution is as silly as can be. It's such insanity that it's ridiculous. I had a rabbi once who said that because in ancient times they were wiser than today, they couldn't have preached evolution in those days. But today the, the world has turned silly and therefore a silly Yitzhara is being preached to a silly world. It, it's all garbage. Each theory is sillier than the one that came before it. But the multitude, the Amin Asha Asa, confuses the weaker ones. The Bachur kept fainting once the Mishkiyah HaMemeir Shiva but in the, in the boy here and the boy was fainting I said why are you fainting he says when he passes by the church he thinks about maybe it's true there are so many churches maybe what they're preaching there in there is true of course it's, uh, it isn't but uh, he is fainting anyhow he was fainting and it was hard for him to stand up I said when uh, you pass a university, a college, where they're preaching evolution, what then? I faint also. Maybe that's true. But each one contradicts the other. How could you faint from both? The answer is the Yatahara says faint anyhow. Faint for any reason. You don't need any cycle to faint from the Yatara. You just have to faint. That's why the Yatara is called a in Hafakfah. He's an upside down man. Yeah, today he walks this way, tomorrow that way, uh, the other way. It doesn't make uh, have to make sense. All in the name that I mean, I share so many people who are saying it, and he wins out on both eyes. It's only because of the reason that uh, it has uh, any power, and that's because that's great. There's great numbers of those who advocate it. The numbers of the, op the opponents and influences of numbers make it extremely difficult to oppose their uh, opinion. On all sides, there is a loud based name, as it was a Devar Hashot, an accepted uh, fact. Evolution is considered in a standard teaching of science today everywhere. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. It's the new Avodazara of the world. Imaginary molecular biology. Somebody once showed me a book of molecular biology. He pointed out that there was 6,000 entries in the index, 6,000 entries. Now, out of those 6,000, only two mentioned uh, the word evolution. And yet the author said in his preface, one of the purposes of medical biology is to teach people the principle of evolution. Now, in the entire book, nothing is mentioned. Two uh, places says out of 6,000. And even in those two places, it doesn't say any proof of, for evolution. It just says it's evolved. How can it evolve? It doesn't matter that it's Shekhar. It's the Torah of the Umar Salam. Torah's Shekel al Shona, Le Shona. It's the all imagination. That's that's from a bacteria eventually be developed into a human being. It's such insanity. It's ridiculous. They have nothing to back it up. How did it happen? Very gradually. A germ turned into a person gradually. We came from soup? <laughs> Just the idea that a germ. Came from life is the most ridiculous thing. How can non life become life? And to this day, there's no answer. They'll tell you the uh, words primordial soap, other tailing stove, but it's a fairy tale. The simplest form of life must have at least one trillion bits of uh, data recorded in it. Again, the simplest CSL must have at least one trillion bits of data in order to have life. You know what a trillion is? More than all the letters in the biggest library in the world. Not books, letters. And each one of the, these data is necessary. A trillion essential bits of information in the simplest form of life. So how can a, a piece of iron or a piece of copper or an atom of oxygen turn into life? 
they try not to answer that question because there's no answer. The evolutionists dodge that question. They say in some ways, we know not how, life originally appeared. Although it, in all the labs, they're trying their best, they're twisting their mind trying to find the way, but it means to show that it's happening, and if they have no evidence, what are they trying to do now? They're spending millions of dollars on the shuttle to go to the planets far off. NASA were very busy wasting your hard-earned money. Maybe though their life are there, and in other places where life develops on its own. They're wasting our money to prove evolution. They'll never find anything. Silly scientists. Of course, they're constantly discovering the evidence and plastered on the front page of the newspaper. Next week, it's not mentioned anywhere. It's forgotten. What happened? Somebody came along and showed them it was an error, a mistake. The whole thing is as silly as could be. But because there are so many that are upholding the theory of, of ev so everyone falls, uh, falls lock step into place, it's the new Avada Zara. Anyone can study this and see the world is crazy, the world is pursued crazy. Of course, we have no time to study their books and to find their uh, answers to arguments. Maybe some specialists could do that. I did it uh, to a big extent, by the way, but life is too short and takes a long time to explain the lies. Uh, if Joe wants to, uh, he can study it and he'll discover in the books of the scientist himself that it's a fraud, but you don't. I mean, even need that. Just open your eyes. Anybody with a brain sees that the truth is that Bereshit Balara Elkim Es Hashemayim B'Es Haaris. The world is full of wisdom, full of planning. You and you can have planned by accident. Every little part of the world shows Chokma Malah Malah Haaris. Can you Necha? The world uh, is full of uh, your Can you mean? Kenyan means a demonstration that you are the, the one that made it. Everything demonstrates it was made with Chachma, showing our evolution. If you pass your food, stand and stop and look. Why is, why is the uh, tomatoes are red when they're ripe? When they're not, and the tomatoes are green. You never talked about that? That alone is the greatest contradiction to these stupid evolutionists. How did it happen that when it's unripe, it's green and it hides? Among the green leaves, don't look at us, we're not ready to eat yet. And then when it's ripe and it's good to eat, it becomes finally red. Pick me now. Apples too, they became red only when they ripen. And uh, not only do they become red and sweet, uh, but they uh, fall down themselves from the tree. Why do they fall down from the trees? Let them uh, hang on the tree forever. Who told them to fall down just now when they taste good? Take one bite of a delicious apple, you know by the way that there is no evolution. As you chew, you become a bigger ma'amin. And why are our seeds inside? Who put seeds there? Each seed contains a million different data on how to produce a tree from that seed. A million bits of animation on each seed. And every fruit, uh, every vegetable has seeds inside. And so a, a fruit stand is so open. Uh, a refutation of all the lies of the Umar's Haalam. Don't sell out. But because all over the uh, all over the world the atheists are all aping each other, others they weren't. They're saying evolution, evolution, evolution. Do they for all the ignorance in the street? What do they know? So they also say evolution and orthodox Jews, the weaklings. They too are saying evolution. There was one speaking against evolution in a certain yeshiva. So one boy came back the next day and he told me that his father, his father was an old yeshiva man. His father said, what's different does it make if you come from a fish or if you don't come from a fish? We still believe that Hashem does everything. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing? Here's a Jew, a Ben Torah, who's already sold to the world. He's so sold that the idea of evolution already seems to be... This, Seems uh, to, to him to be no contradiction to Torah because once there's such a great number of people who believe in a false ideology, so if you're weakling, it becomes your ideology too. How does such a, such a thing happen? Because he never understood the Pasuk in our Parsha, he never realized that Hashem made them all uh, to test him. We don't care, 
today we when you have no, so many evolution no, evolutionists if you are ready to clarify your own thoughts and remain a uh, ma'amin, I mean, that's a great atzlacha you say i don't care what you'll say i don't care how many uh, how many you are i don't care your, uh, how big your universities are i still say Bereshis bara came Hashem made the whole world out of nothing. That's why there is such a thing as evolution. That's why Hashem put in the hand, head of Darwin his stupid theory so that we should laugh at him. It's a test to test us so we that we learn to laugh instead of faint. When the Jew is able to combat the uh, combined clamor of the world, the entire world, and say, no, that's the greatness of character. And the more difficult it is to fight back against all the falsehoods of evolution, all the falsehoods of the colleges and the libraries and li laboratories, the greater we become. Thank you for coming today and have a nice week.